get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the CEOs or founders of Big Commerce, Zapier, Buffer, P90X, Atari, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Um, this episode is brought to you by Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. Our mission is to connect you with your best referral partners and customers. Uh, we do that through our done-for-you services. We have a complete done-for-you event solution. For big conferences or software companies, we have a podcast, Done For You Podcast Solution, which in my opinion, Patrick, is the best thing I've done for my my life and my business outside of my wife. She yelled at me the other day about that, saying that. Um, <laughs> and I know you're big into content too, so I want to go into that. And a Done For You lead generation service. But our greater purpose is our mission behind why we do everything, which is we realize that our grandfathers were a big inspiration to us. And my grandfather was a Holocaust survivor who escaped from Germany and him and his brother were the only survivors in their family. And while that was happening, my business partner's grandfather was um, a B-17 captain and flew 35 missions over Nazi Germany. And so to honor our grandfather's legacies, we have a scholarship um, and it's a veteran entrepreneur scholarship. Um, it can be anywhere from an all expense paid trip to the conference that we're doing, a comp conference ticket. We just had someone uh, recently, we had a San Diego one. They want, you know, Richard Branson was the keynote at that one. Um, and we did a VIP event the day before. They got flight, hotel, conference ticket, meals, everything paid for. So if you know a veteran entrepreneur or you are one yourself, you can apply to a future event that we're doing, um, rise25.com slash mission. And you'll see the background you can apply. So feel free to send it to someone um, who's in need or someone who's even further along and just wants to see what cool events they can go to. But let's get on. I'm excited to talk to Patrick and it's been a long time coming. Um, we have Patrick Campbell. He's co-founder of ProfitWell and Patrick has grown ProfitWell from nothing in 2012 and we'll find out what 2012 looked like in, I think it was in your bedroom somewhere, um, to over <laughs> $10 million and 70 staff um, and ProfitWell has a free product that integrates with tools like Stripe and Braintree to bring all of your subscription and financial metrics together in one place. Um, they have numerous paid products that help SaaS companies grow. You know, I, I have this joke, Patrick, all the SaaS companies, um, founders I know, I want to make a t-shirt, maybe I just should, just got churn, question mark, and just send it to them <laughs> because I feel that's always the topic of conversation. Um, they have numerous paid products. I digress. Um, that helps SaaS companies grow, like price intelligently retain, which all SaaS companies want to retain their customers and a few others. Um, they have over 10,000 companies now using ProfitWell. Um, companies like Big Commerce, ClassPass, Zenefits, Meetup, Calendly, Masterclass. Um, I'm fascinated by Masterclass, by the way. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining well. me, Patrick. Yeah, thanks for being here, man. And So at that, let's say someone's doing $20,000 a month. Um, yep. Yeah, I know there's tiers at the at the base price, probably because it's the largest percentage, I imagine, that you take. Yeah. Can you share what that is? Yeah, totally. So okay. I think it would be, um, so I, I, you know, it's funny, I haven't sold, I used to be the main salesperson on Retain. I haven't sold Retain in a while. I think it right itself, now. That's why, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, honestly, like we do now have a self-serve. We didn't always have a self-serve. Now we have a self-serve yeah. for, and we move the threshold depending on what we're seeing. I think the threshold is and like you you anytime we'll get on the phone with someone doing a thousand bucks a month. I know that's like a waste of time, but we just do it because I think it's a really good touch point for our products and our, our brand. But I think that um the percentage, like we might take that whole first month um on on some of that level, right? So if we recover fifty bucks we'll wait till that second month and then we might take the $50, right? Because then it net, it still nets out for that user. But like I said, this is why like we were getting into conversations where people were like, well, that's like a hundred percent of it. And we're like, yes, but you already have made like three times that, you know, on that user. And it, it just like, 
we got them to the point where they're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. This is great. But it was just so much time for $50. So that's why we were like, all right, get set up and we'll send you the email. And I shouldn't say this, but really like if you don't end up paying, we're like, we might, you know, depending on how uh, tough you were with support with us, we might be like, oh, we're going to turn this off unless you pay us or yeah. we'll kind of just like let it run basically. Yeah. So what would be the minimum? Is it, are we talking like percent, like 10%, 20%? Um, the minimum, like, so we have some that we're recovering like hundreds of thousands of dollars per month. And so the minimum is probably like five to 10%. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, I think it might actually be even lower than that. Um, but we don't like, you can calculate the percentage, but we don't think about it as the percentage. I know at some point our pricing basically goes for every extra hundred thousand dollars we recover for you. Oh, and then remember this is over their recovery. So this right. is like all free money, if you will, or found money as they say. But I think for every extra hundred thousand, we charge like five grand. So but that's over a certain threshold. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then typically like, then it gets into like negotiation because these big dogs, they want special, you know, private cloud and a bunch of other things. And so it's just something to kind of think about. Yeah. So we're right at the hour, Patrick. I had two other questions. Sure. So um, I don't want to, I know you have a million things. You have 70 people emailing you right now <laughs> uh, for various tasks. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. if you have to run, I will not be offended at all. Or we no can worries, go man. with those two questions. Um, oh, I wanted to get your take on content. Because I know, I mean, there's this, yeah. that's one. Um, because I know you're a big proponent of content and you guys use it well and you, I think, I don't know, for a long time, that's your marketing strategy. Right? It still is. Yeah, still yeah. Is. I think for us, um, there, there's the first interview I ever did, um, I what was funny is someone described or asked how I described price intelligently or something. They asked like a, an, a question where this answer was appropriate and not like off, off the rails. But the question or the answer was like, I think of our, us as like an economic think tank wrapped hmm. in a media company. Yeah. Media company. Um, yeah. You talk about that. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And so that's like the media company concept. Um, it wasn't something that we were like, this is exactly what we're going to go after, or this is the, 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 the concept since the beginning. Um, it was one of those things where it evolved over time. Um, but it was one of the, but, but now we think of it like as a media company and you're starting to see that over the past year, how we've kind of evolved into video series, um, the new website, um, that'll be out in the next couple of months, hopefully for the, for our, um, content hub, um, that'll look very much like a Hulu or a Bloomberg or those types of things. And yeah, we just found content to be so powerful and we got pretty good at it. And we're kind of in a space where good content exists, but good content actually does really, really well. And so we kind of went all in on it. And so, um, yeah, content's been great for us. Yeah. So what, what suggestions, what's worked for you as far as content goes? I think that you have to, so this is kind of basic advice, but I think a lot of us don't follow it. You have to understand where in the funnel the content is for. So we have this show called Pricing Page Teardown and Profit Well Report. And the reason we have that is because we were very clear that this is middle of the funnel, if not bottom of the top of the funnel, we call it content, where if you're not interested in pricing, you're not interested in benchmarks, you're not going to watch these. You're not going to look at them. You're not going to read the blog posts. You're not really interested, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, one of our other shows, Protect the Hustle, which is our podcast, um, that's a top of the funnel, you yeah. know, that's like a very like overarching show. And so that, that helped us a lot because then it was, okay, when we're developing new concepts, like we're just going to go after it. And then, you know, I think the other thing is don't forget, you know, the SEO evergreen style content, which I think is like, you know, it's kind of, it's not diametrically opposed to this strategy, but it's definitely not like they're not the same thing. And so we added back in a lot of this like SEO style um, content, which we won't send really to our lists unless it's like a really good like piece of content, but we added in for the SEO value and things like that. And so that's been really helpful because now when they sit on top of each other, like those channels work out really well for us in terms of our spread and our brand. Yeah, I love you talking about top of funnel, middle of funnel. Um, so thanks for thanks for mentioning that because I think it's Absolutely. super important to eliminate some people. Some people are afraid to turn, like if it's not for everyone, they feel bad. But it, it shouldn't be for everyone. You don't serve everyone, you know. So well, it's a product. Yeah, yeah. Um, so last question. I'm combining two in one just because I want to hear your opinion on it. But I always yeah. ask since Inspired Insider, what's been the lowest moment how you push through it and we talked a little bit on the front of this interview and then what's been a proud yeah. moment from the journey 
um, yeah. that you can talk about because as entrepreneurs, oftentimes we don't celebrate things. Yeah. Um, so what's been yeah. a low moment that you had to push through and then um, a proud moment, high point? Yeah. I think low moments hard, not because there ha there's a lot of, I can name a lot of low moments, but like the lowest moments hard because it's like, you always rationalize like after you get through it, like, cool, I'm, I'm, you know, we solved that. Let's keep going. Right. Yeah, kind of like your co-founder thing. Like, oh, I wouldn't be here where I'm at today if yeah, I didn't go through totally. that justification. Yeah. Totally. So I think a, a really low moment, um, it's not like a single point. I think that, um, well, it's so tough because it's so hard to pick the worst one because <laughs> they're all <laughs> bad. Uh, no, I think like a couple of low ones. Maybe I'll, I'll give you some some volume here instead of like one. Um, yeah, I think, do um, that. Cancer wasn't like too tough. I mean, like it was tough. Don't get me wrong. Like I'm not trying to like, oh my god, I'm so tough. I'm a hero. But it was more like, um, it, it was it was like very pragmatic. Like, oh, this is happening. I now need to go solve this problem. Right. Um, very much in my control, even though it wasn't like, but it felt like I can go to my treatments. I can keep my mind right. I can do these things. Right. I think some some really low moments were when when it's like not really in your control. So I think the the part time co founder thing was super tough. Um, and it, it like wasn't a single moment. It was a lot of like just cycles of frustration. Um, you know, and I, I think like, I don't know if anyone had ill intentions throughout this whole thing, but it was one of those things where it still sucked. Right. Um, I think another really low moment was, um, like in the early days, I was, I mean, there were weeks where I was doing two all nighters a week, um, maybe three sometimes, which I know you're like, Oh, you're not supposed to do that. It's a marathon, not a sprint, but it's like, yeah, but I got customers who need their right. stuff understaffed and all these other things like the job has to get done. And those were like right. the frantic days that I was talking about. Um, you know, I, I, I ended up getting out of a seven year relationship during, um, profit well. And so, you know, I had this situation where, and it was, I mean, at the end of seven years, it's, it's, it wasn't, we weren't married, but you're kind of married, I guess. So yeah. when it's a common out, law marriage, let's call yeah, it not yeah, really, it's, but yeah, it's a bit of a divorce. Like I don't want to call it a divorce because that, I mean, I feel like a divorce is more higher, you know, intensity, but it definitely like, you know, moving out and, um, you know, it was, it was one of those things where I think that thankfully, you know, I feel like at the end of those, they're either very volatile, like, you know, everyone's pissed or they're kind of like, this is very not working. We're going to move it's on. A mutual and it kind of, yeah, it was like the latter. Um, and I think that that was like super, that was just tough because then like shortly thereafter, like the cancer stuff, the second time happened. Um, and so that was just kind of like a, oh yeah, cool. Like, you know, I know this is for the better, but like it sucks right now. Um, and then finally, I think like, to be frank, I think I'm in a low point like right now. Like, I know that's tough to say, right? Because like, I look back and I'm like, hey, we're in a really good place. Like I could leave for a month and you know, maybe I wouldn't get, obviously I wouldn't get my stuff done, but like the business would continue. Right. Which is like really cool to be in that, that feeling. But I think right now it's a very overwhelming, like scaling problem where it's like, holy cow, like the work is so much more intense emotionally because it's all these scaling issues, which are, are, are high thought problems. It's not mm -hmm. like, Hey, I just got to get in here and fix this bug. It's like, yeah. no, I have to like, you know, deal with, you know, Tetris of people's emotions and hiring the right people and planning. And so, yeah, and I think proud moments. I think um, every Christmas we so we have an office in Rosario, Argentina. It's about ten folks, um, and then the rest of folks are in Boston. And so every Christmas we have this conference. It's it's you know maybe the second week of of December or the first week depending on mm -hmm. the schedules, and um, we bring everyone to Boston and we do this during the summer as well for like a retreat um, or we'll go somewhere. Like sometimes it's Austin, Texas. Sometimes it's New Hampshire, etc. But I always love those moments because when I look around, it's like, it's this, it's a feeling of like pride in the sense of like, I remember last time this happened, I was like, there's everyone here I would bring home to like hang out with my parents. Mm. Like I'd be weird. Like everyone, That's cool. like, yeah, like there's a bunch of problems. Like this guy or gal is not, you know, they need to fix this. And as long as they like cheese curds. Them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. But I think that's the thing. Like the team at the end of the day, the team is, is what, what makes it. And, yeah. um, that's a dangerous feeling because it's, it's, you know, there's, there's a mission that really is what we're focused on. And sometimes, you know, you need to prune some of the team and sometimes you're going to make mistakes with your team, but that's, that's the big thing. And I think, I mean, when we cross like, you know, a million dollars for the first time. And then when we had our like million dollar quarter for the or, um, month for the first time, like those, those things are really cool. But I think it's, I mean, 
I, I, I'm really happy that I got to a place where like the money aspect is really important and that's how we measure like our success as a whole, but it's not like the driving factor, which I think is, it's a very subtle nuanced point there, but it's, yeah. I think it's really cool that like, you know, that's where we're trying to go for product for our user experience. Um, and we're willing to, we're now very aligned on making sacrifices in the short term for money and for long term gain, if that makes sense. Yeah. Patrick. I want to be the first one to thank you. This has been absolutely fantastic. I'm holding back on all the questions I've written down because I want to respect your time a little bit. Um, but but this has been fantastic. I want to put a plug in for the conference. What's the conference name um, and who's who should be going to the conference? Obviously, subscription companies, I imagine. But what's it called? Yeah. Where, where can people find it? It's called Recur. Uh, so it's mm -hmm. Recur uh, Boston. Um, you can find it on the Profile website. Okay. Um, we, um, it's in Boston. It's, we keep it fairly like intentionally small. So mm. about 200 people max. Um, and then we also do like a smaller exec and founder only session that we limit to about 30, 40 people for one of the days. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very much focused on like bringing execs and founders of subscription companies together. It's a single track conference, plenty of time to like network and meet everybody. And, um, yeah, it's a pretty, it's, it, we really enjoy it because it's, it's very in line with how we think about the values and stuff like that. Like, you know, we're we're not going to get Pitbull to come play or anything like that. It's more about like the learning and the connections rather than like just having a good time. Although we do have a really good time as well. Yeah. So everyone should check out profitwell.com. It's profit, W E L L.com. They're doing amazing things. Patrick, thank you so much. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. Yeah. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. What do the find? Came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.